In this, the first of our new series of Regs in Brief, we're going to point out the top 10 changes in Amendment 2 of the 18th edition that are most likely to affect your current electrical work. Change 1. Type AC RCDs. With Amendment 2 of the 18th, although these are still recognised for use, they can only be used on circuits where it is known that there are no DC currents that could affect its operation. Realistically then, the most common type of RCD or RCBO that will be used for new installations will be a Type A. This is something probably long overdue. Change 2. AFDDs. These are no longer just a recommendation for all circuits. They're now a requirement for socket outlets rated up to 32 amps on single phase final circuits. But, and it's a big but, only for premises where there may be more complex evacuation considerations. For example, higher risk residential properties or where residents may need assistance due to mobility issues. Change three, cable support. Although it was always the intention that the requirements for supporting cables to prevent premature collapse during a fire always included telecoms, fibre optics and similar cables not installed by electricians, many didn't realise it did. So if you've got mates on site installing these cables, it might just be worth pointing out that the appropriate metallic or similar heat resistant fixings should be used. Change 4. Risk assessments to declare that RCD protection is not required. Although these are still permitted, the number of scenarios where it's permissible to use one have been reduced. With Amendment 2, they can only be used for locations without ordinary persons, children or anyone with a disability. Now, realistically, this is going to be hard to find. They just don't want us to do it. Change 5. Risk assessments for SPDs. The risk assessment process to determine whether SPDs were required has been completely removed from the regs. SPDs are now an absolute requirement in three areas. This is where the consequence of an overvoltage could result in serious injury or loss of human life, failure of a safety service, or cause significant financial or data loss. In all other cases, SPDs shall be provided unless the owner of the installation declares that the surge protection isn't required because they accept that any loss or damage is tolerable. However, your scheme provider may have an opinion on this. Change 6. Schedule of inspections. This has been greatly simplified with Amendment 2 of the 18th and will certainly make life easier for those carrying out inspection and testing. Change 7. Insulation resistance tests. There have been some tweaks made here requiring that a 500 volt test is absolutely essential before the equipment is connected. Then later checks, after that equipment has been installed, can be carried out at 250 volts. Although this procedure was always implied, many who delayed the insulation resistance test until after the equipment had been installed were missing the 500 volt step. Change 8. The five times RCD test has gone. When verifying additional protection, this test is no longer required. All we now do is test the rated residual operating current and check that the RCD operates within 300 milliseconds for general RCDs and between 130 milliseconds and 500 milliseconds for S-type time-delayed RCDs. It's worth just mentioning here that the table for time current performance criteria for RCDs that was found in Appendix 3 has now been retired from the regs. Change 9. RCDs for outside lighting installations. With Amendment 2, additional protection is now required for lighting circuits, feeding areas where the public are likely to come into contact with the lighting equipment and associated structure. This now includes several new locations, such as gardens. Change 10. Great news for all those who would like a socket outlet in the bathroom. Now, previously it was 3 metres from the edge of the bath. Now that distance is reduced to 2.5. Half a metre doesn't sound much, but it might be the difference between using your hairdryer or not. No real change for Gary then. Cheers Dave. Saves me a bit of time in the morning. So that's it. That's our top 10 changes. Don't forget though that there are many more changes including a new part eight called functional requirements. But we've picked the ones that are going to impact your electrical designs and installations today. And we'll be covering part eight in other videos. Please do like and subscribe to this channel and also sign up to receive our learninglounge.com Unavolta newsletter, which will keep you up to date on changes in the industry, free training content we provide, 
and special offers on our electrical training courses and qualifications. See, See you soon. soon.